Hey everybody, most of my videos usually involve some um, aspect of Google Sites or another Google app and uh, I've recently discovered Google Classroom so I thought what I'd do is make a few videos on how to use this. It's a great and powerful tool for education to communicate with your students and uh, I'm going to start, here's this first short video, is going to be how to uh, create classroom classrooms and add students to them. Uh, what's nice with Google Classroom is it's almost like a website. It's not quite. It's actually a Google group kind of on steroids. Uh, but it, it takes some of the basic functions that you would use on a teacher website, like having a calendar, having a place for documents and a place for announcements, and it makes them very, very easy to do. And it gets these things to your students and to your students' parents in, a, in an easy way without much effort on your part as a teacher. So uh, let's go ahead and begin with this. Uh, the first step towards creating a Google Classroom, there's a few different ways you could do this. One, you could go into Google and you could type, uh, I guess I'll type Google Classroom. And they have a website. So that'll take you right in. If you're already signed into your account, then it's going to take you right to Classroom. And you'll see I've already got some classes in here. Uh, if, if you like getting to classroom this way, then you'll want to bookmark this, and this is one of my bookmarked uh, sites. Another way to get into classroom is to log into your school email, click the apps launcher, and you click more, and classroom is right down here. If you click that, that's going to bring you in. So let's just bring classroom over here. So now you're in classroom. Here's the main page. And you've got a classes page, a calendar page, a work page, and it's, it's got links to all of your classes. The classes page shows all of your classes. The calendar page is pretty much what it says. It's a calendar. Work is an interesting page because work actually shows the assignments that you put in and uh, the status of these assignments. So this is going to bring in the, the assignments itself. You can see who's done. This is just kind of, I'm demoing around, so I don't have many students loaded into this, just myself. So with that, um, we're going to go back to the main page. And of course, if you click on any of these, it's going to bring you to the assignment. And I'll talk more about that in a different video. We're just going to go back to the main class page. If you've never done this before, you're not going to have these classes. Oh, another nice little feature. If you click this, that's going to take you right into the folder with Drive. One of the coolest things about Google Classroom is when you create a class, it automatically, without you doing anything, creates a folder in your drive called Classroom, and then it creates that particular course folder. Without you doing anything, it also creates a calendar. So these are two main uh, purposes of a website that it does without you doing anything. Now, speaking of creating classrooms, how difficult is that? You click plus, create class, We'll call this seventh period underwater basket weaving, of course. And you select create. Wow, you just created a website. Look how difficult that was. Now, if you don't like this theme, you can choose a different one. It just kind of picks these at random. If you click select theme, you've got a gallery or patterns. I tend to prefer the gallery. looks much better. Uh, oh, well, you know, this looks kind of woolly, and since this isn't, well, let me look. What would best fit underwater basket weaving? Not really sure. Uh, this just looks cool, so we'll use that. Okay, that's very purple. So now you've created this class. Up here you've got a gearbox. This is back to the main thing, so same thing that we saw before. Within your class, you have stream. That's where you're going to put all your assignments. You have students. If you do about, you can put something about your class in here. And see, it's going to show some of this other stuff. So it's got there, and notice it's got links to the calendar and to the to uh, the the folder within this. So you can type up this class. I'm going to show you about how to make underwater baskets. Uh, and then notice you also have a students tab. That's what we're going to do. Now, a couple things here. Do you notice you have this class code? I'm going to copy this. There's two different ways 
that you oh this bears talking about so I think this is important notice you've got this students can post and comment I made a comment earlier that this isn't actually a website well it is and it isn't it's really like a Google group on steroids and so when you put students can post and comment this means students can actually post discussion questions they can comment on them if you choose this students can only comment whoops Oh, there! I, it took a second to say. So students can only comment. They can't post. You can also choose only teacher can post and comment. If you have any doubts, maybe you want to start with that one. Um, it's up to you. You can you can always change these anytime later on. So you've got that within your course. And then, of course, it gives you this class code. Now, what the class code does is this allows students to just log into Classroom and put your code in in case you don't want to go through the, the process of manually adding your students, which is actually kind of an easy thing. So it's really your choice. Now, to put students in the class, you click on Invite. And what's going to come up by default is your contacts. And I've just loaded some dummy contacts in here, so you can see I've got these students. I could select all. That would obviously be if you had lots of, if this was your real school email, you're going to have lots of contacts on there. So you're probably not going to choose that one. Another option is groups. And this is the people who, who administer your Google Apps domain. They can create groups within that. A lot of times when schools give kids Gmail accounts, they'll make a large group called students and it'll be different from say a faculty group so if your apps admin has set it up this way you can click on that and you might even have grade levels and even courses selected in there depends on how much they want to do if you don't know or they haven't done that one option for you is to go into your gmail contacts beforehand and load your students into classroom groups and make those your you know some of your groups here so under mine I made a test student group and let's say this is all the students that I have for seventh period so what I'm gonna do is select all and invite students now when I do this it's gonna automatically send emails out to all these students these are bogus emails by the way so watch what happens now even if these were real emails this would have come up this red box one of the things that's interesting about uh, Google Classroom is it's very closed. Your students have to be within your app's domain. And recently, uh, Classroom has added another feature to where if, if you had a slightly different app's domain, you can add students there. But basically, they have to be under, under the umbrella. This does not allow you to, to, to just invite kids who have Gmail accounts. They specifically have to have your organizational account. If they don't, you can't get them in. So this is something that you can use for your students that have Google accounts. If you want to let parents in on this, they're going to have to go through the student account and, and load that into their phone or whatever. So anyway, what you would do is you would invite. You can also find kids from contacts or again, you can use this. Now I'm going to show you how this, this code works by going in. I'm going to switch browsers here. Go back to Google accounts. And I'm going to log in. This is an actual organization account. So I'm going to log in this way. This is just a dummy account I use to see how Classroom works. And once again, I'm in my Gmail. I would go to the browser or the apps launcher and I can... Uh, click classroom that's going to open it or I can have classroom saved if you were coaching parents through this you would probably have them go to classroom and make it a favorite so that they could get to it very easily now you notice underwater basket weaving is not on here because I didn't invite little Clayton I was inviting other students so what I do is I click plus as little Clayton and I enter the code and since that is part of my apps domain it now adds me to this class so it, it automatically added me to do that so one option for you to put students in is to walk them down to the computer lab if you don't have devices right there in the classroom and have the code and you write it up on the board and they they just log into their Gmail account they go into classroom then they put that code in there or maybe even the school does this at the beginning of the year and they put all the the classes in there so the other way would be to actually um, send it through email and again we'll dismiss just a quick review on that one you go invite 
it brings you to your contact list if you have worked before and you've made groups then you can just go in and maybe you grouped your students by uh, course and, and period then you could just click select all and invite them that way so that's that's another way you, to, you could do this so anyway I hope this video has been helpful I'm trying to make a few of these so they're short so uh, if you have any questions I've also got this up on my website and you can go and take a look at that tutorial as well